Hello everyone and welcome back to Paper Walk and Tell, where we make forms and applications easy on everyone. Raheem on the mic and I'm your host, Nigeria Stand Up. Okay now. In this episode, I'll be answering a question I received about CPP, Canada Pension Plan. I know someone asked about EI, Employment Insurance. I'll try to cover that in a future episode. So the question is, how do I stop paying CPP? Apparently this brother is sick and tired of being sick and tired of seeing that money taken from his paycheck. Well, good on you for asking questions because that's how you learn. Here's a throwback. My parents used to say, perceive when they ask question, no the miss road. Translation, people that ask questions often don't get lost. Let's begin with an overview on CPP, then we'll take a look at how it's calculated from the money you earn and how you can stop your contributions. Let's go. CPP, Canada Pension Plan, applies to the rest of Canada except for Quebec, where it's known as Quebec Pension Plan. None of us can cheat time. At some point, our working days are going to be done, finito, and that could be due to a retirement, death, or disability. But you know what's never going to be done? Bills, bills, you guessed it, more bills. Life doesn't stop, man. So someone had an idea, don't ask me who. And the idea was, let's create a pool of money. Everyone working, with a few exceptions, will have to put money into this pool for a very, very long time. Then, when they stop working or can no longer work for reasons we approve, we'll give them or their family back some money every month. Not a lot, just a little something something to help out with living expenses. Here's the thing with ideas. You get them, I get them, meh, we all get them. Good ideas on the other hand, that's a different story. With that backdrop in mind, this is how the government explains it. For the purpose of this video, we'll keep it simple. We're going to assume an employee-employer relationship and that our income is pensionable. Okay, you join the club when you turn 18. And like those magazines or gym contracts we all dread, your membership goes on auto-renew till you turn 70. That means the average person is expected to contribute to the plan for 52 years. Now, depending on who you talk to, it does sound like a life sentence, doesn't it? Before you go get some Advil for that headache you feel coming, there's some good news. You can choose to opt out before 70. More on that later. One look at your pay stub and you'll notice QPP or CPP is the first deduction taken from your earnings. Calculating your contribution is not complicated. Here's how you do it. You'll need to know three things. Your gross, pensionable, taxable income, the basic exemption amount, and the contribution rate. Now, let's say you make $45,000 a year. Let's break that down into a pay cycle. Most people get paid bi-weekly. And for 2021, that's 26 pay periods. So we'll take our yearly salary of 45,000 and divide it by 26. This is our gross, pensionable, taxable income every two weeks. Next, we need to know the basic exemption. And that info is always available on the CRA's website. The basic exemption for 2021 is $3,500. What does this amount mean? It means CPP or QPP is not deducted from the first $3,500 of your annual income. You would have to make more than $3,500 a year before you can contribute to the pension plan. But let's apply the exemption using our bi-weekly pay period. When we take the 3,500 and divide it by 26, we get this amount per pay period. 
So far, we know the gross, pensionable pay, and the exemption. Now we need the rate, which can be easily found on the CRA's website. For 2021, it's 5.45%, except for those in Quebec, where the rate is 5.55%. Now that we have all the values we need, let's do the math. Here's the formula. Gross, pensionable, taxable income minus the exemption multiplied by the rate. Your employer deducts CPP or QPP and sends it to Canada Revenue or Revenue Quebec. And from what I gather, the government doesn't just sit on that pile of cash till benefits are paid out. There's an elite group of guys and girls that go by the name Canada Pension Plan Investment Board. They invest some of the money in different markets to grow the funds, therefore helping to keep the pension sustainable. They remind me of that function on your TV remote you never knew existed. One day, you press it by accident and you're like, no way, shut the front door. That's what it does? Wicked. Here's a nugget of intel for you guys. Do you know employers have to match your contributions? Yes, they do. Dollar for dollar. In our previous example, we calculated a CPP contribution of this amount. When your employer remits this contribution to Canada Revenue on your behalf, they'll have to send this amount, which is double, and the same applies to Quebec. Well, if you must ruin a beautiful sunny day, then by all means, you can use the estimator tool on the CRA's website to estimate how much CPP you are likely to receive. Let's say you wake up one morning and decide this pension is no longer your cup of tea. Can you stop paying? Of course you can. What do you think this is? A dictatorship? No man, get out of here with that. This right here is a free country. You can stop paying if you choose. Not just right away. You'd have to wait a little bit. To be more specific, when you reach the age of 70, that's when it automatically stops. If you really don't want to wait till 70, the government allows you to stop your contributions at 65. Whether you choose to intervene at 65 or keep paying till 70 is going to be a personal decision. But now's a good time to introduce Form CPT-30, which is the form you fill and give to your employer, expressing your wish to either stop or restart your contributions. So, say for example, at 65, you decide to stop your contributions. You'll have to use this form. Let's say two years later, at 67, you decide you want to start contributing again. You'd have to fill out another CPT-30 and give it to your employer. Part A is where you fill in your identification. Part B checks your eligibility with three simple questions. The first two are straightforward, so I'll bring your attention to question number three. You're allowed to submit a CPT-30 to your employer one time in a calendar year. So, if you answer yes to this question, you might as well stop right here because you're not eligible at this time. Moving on to part C. This is where you elect to stop your contributions. Part D is the opposite. That's where you elect to restart your contributions. So there'll never be a scenario where you have to fill both of these sections. Here at the bottom, date, sign, and we're done. Before we wrap things up, let's go back to this page so I can help you guys demystify more of this info. We already covered the exemption amount and the contribution rate. So let's begin with maximum annual pensionable earnings. That is the maximum amount that is considered for your CPP contribution. So even if you make $100,000 in 2021, it doesn't matter. Your CPP contribution will be based on 61600 Next, we have the maximum contributory earnings, and that amount is simply the 61600 
minus the basic exemption. Next, we have the maximum annual employee and employer contribution. And that amount is the 58,100 multiplied by the contribution rate. When your contributions reaches this amount, your payroll department will have to stop deducting CPP. And finally, we have maximum annual self-employed contribution. We already know employers have to match an employee's contribution. When you're self-employed, you are your own employer. So that means you have to double your contribution. You get this amount by multiplying $3,166.45 times two. There you have it, folks. Now you know a tiny bit more about the Canada and Quebec pension plans. You welcome, you welcome. I would like to leave you guys with a thought. QPP and CPP is meant to replace about 25% of your income. So for the sake of illustration, think of getting by on a quarter of the income you have now. Not a pretty picture for many folks. Good reason why we should plan to have other revenue streams for when we get to that stage in life. I'm still trying to figure things out myself. When my time comes, I may just pack my bags and move back to Wakanda, where I can have three wives with my CPP income. All right, how easy is the CPT 30 form to fill? I'll give it a solid nine. It's simple and to the point. Nothing that should rattle your cage. Thank you all for watching. If there's something you'd like to see me cover on the channel, let me know in the comments or send me an email. If you enjoyed this content and you'd like to give me a high five or a fist pump, you could subscribe to the channel and use the coffee link in the description to send the coffee my way. I take it black, no sugar, no cream. Thank you, your support is always appreciated. Thanks again for spending this time avec moi. I'll catch you all in the next one. Deuces.